you're still running your business on QuickBooks? QuickBooks? More like quick sand. The bigger your company grows, the faster you sync with outdated software that just can't keep up. You don't have time to spend dealing with manual processes, multiple systems, delays, and scrambling to get the numbers you need. It's time to get on solid ground. NetSuite by Oracle, the scalable solution to run all of your key back office operations, no matter how big your company grows. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your finances, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need to grow all in one place. NetSuite helps you automate your key business processes and close your books in a fraction of the time. Think days, not weeks. In fact, 93% of surveyed organizations increased visibility and control over their business since making the switch from QuickBooks to NetSuite. Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program only for those ready to graduate from QuickBooks. Head to NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. That's special financing for you graduates at NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. NetSuite.com slash C-Suite. Are you good with people? Maybe you're organized or have a knack for numbers. Well, then chances are you've got skills that could lead to a new career. A Google Career Certificate can help you get a foot in the door with top employers in fast-growing fields like IT support, project management, data analytics, and user experience design. It's professional-level training developed and taught by Google employees. And it's all online so you can learn around your schedule. Put your skills to work. Go to grow.google slash certificates. The key to sustainable leadership lies in the ability to thrive in uncertainty, ambiguity, and change. Grand Heron International brings you the Coaching Assistance Program, giving your employees on-demand coaching to manage through a challenging situation and arrive at a solution. Visit grandheroninternational.ca slash podcast to learn more. This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Welcome to the Keep Leading Podcast, a podcast dedicated to promoting leadership development and sharing leadership insights. Here's your host, the Leadership Accelerator, Eddie Turner. All right. Well, welcome everyone to Keep Leading Live. Keep Leading Live is the video version of the Keep Leading Podcast. Like the Keep Leading Podcast, Keep Leading Live is dedicated to leadership development and insights. I'm your host, Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator. I work with leaders to accelerate their performance and drive impact, primarily through executive coaching, facilitation, and motivational speaking. It's been a while since I've done a live broadcast. Let's see if I can remember how this works today. But so many wonderful things have been happening, and I'm delighted to be here today with a very special guest that I can't wait to tell you about. We're streaming live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. If you are here, don't be a stranger. Let us know you're here by commenting. And you can comment throughout our discussion. Tell us who you are and tell us where you're located. And I'm going to invite you to ask questions of our guest. And we would love for you to be able to follow our guest. And so I'll be sure to share her information with you so you can uh, stay connected with her and learn from her. And hit the share button. If you are listening to us, in addition to letting us know you're here, as Nader just did, hit the share button so this goes into your friend's feed so they can either join us live or it's available to them after our session has concluded. Now, almost everyone has heard of Uber. Uber has become a verb and it has played a significant part in what's known as the gig economy. And this idea of the gig economy and doing uh, hiring freelancers and independent contractors 
It's now even coming inside of corporations. Instead of hiring a permanent employee, perhaps a 1099 employee, a 1099 contractor or freelancer for a gig. Entrepreneurs are very familiar with services like Upwork and Fiverr. It's the lifeline to a lot of small businesses. Because of my guest today, I stepped back and looked at the work that independent contractors and freelancers do differently. I see it as a different form of leadership. So to that end, we're going to talk about leading as a financer today and how you can make six figures as a freelancer. If you're going to do that, you need a freelance expert. My guest today is indeed a freelance expert. My guest today joining me is Alex Fasulo, and you see her there right now. Alex is a full-time freelance writer, author, speaker, copywriter, and business owner. She is best known for making a million dollars as a freelancer on Fiverr. So she's going to tell us the secrets today. I can't wait to learn and help my own business. Alex, welcome to Keep Leading Live. Thank you for having me, Eddie. You are so well-spoken. I feel like I need you to come like MC something for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> You're such a great writer. I'm going to have you write some things for me. So we're, we're, we're even. <laughs> That's true. We should trade. Do a trade. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into our interview. Uh, yeah, I mean, my story's been blasted out there. I sometimes feel like I've uh, people have heard it many times, but I... Went to college, you know, thought I was going to work in an office for the rest of my life, the typical, you know, schedule for everyone. And I graduated, went to work in Albany as a press coordinator um, in the New York State Assembly. And a year later, I applied to jobs in New York City, which was about two hours away because I wanted to, you know, see what was out there. The classic, you know, from a small town, I want to see if I can make it in a big city. The usual, the usual story. And um, I took a PR job in New York City that I only lasted four weeks at, as everyone knows, because uh, I hated it so much and I hated working in an office so much. And um, that was the best thing I ever did, technically, because it kind of forced me to start freelancing as a way to make my bills um, because I had a situation, you know, bills aren't easy to pay in a New York City or a Brooklyn. Um, so after I quit that job, I was like, okay, I have to get serious about this. And, you know, I was on Fiverr at the time. I was only editing. I wasn't taking it very seriously. So when I quit the job, I opened a bunch of new writing services on Fiverr. And it was only a couple months later that I was self-sufficient, paying my bills. Um, you know, I, that was when I was like, wow, I can make a career as a freelance writer work for myself. And that was nearly six years ago now. So uh, you find me six years later, um, still doing the same thing, but in a different capacity, of course. And it's been great. Six years. Wow. Yeah. Your story's been, you're right. You're everywhere. Uh, I saw you on CNBC, uh, yeah. Forbes, and uh, every place. And I said, I've got to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. It's crazy. Some people who are listening may not know what a freelancer is. May have an idea. May have heard the phrase. So can you just start off by telling us what a freelancer is? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So I have people still ask me, they, they don't quite understand it. So a freelancer, just another term for someone who works for themselves, you're an entrepreneur in essence, and you work with clients on a per project basis. So it's part of the gig economy, much like with Uber, you'll book a driver to drive you one way and back, and then that's it. And that's um, a freelancer. I'll have people reach out to me and have me write a blog for them. I write the blog, I deliver it to them. And, you know, that, that might be it. That might be the end of our arrangement. And therefore I could work with anywhere from 10 to 20 clients every day. And that's um, actually the scalability of it. And also what I like about it, because no two days are the same. How did you get started? Um, 
Well, so I had been on Fiverr actually while I was working in Albany because I was bored and my mom told me about it. So my mom always knows about trends and everything. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm bored. I don't like working in an office, you know? And she was like, oh, shut up. And like, here, you know, here's a website that you can maybe make some money on. And that was it. You know, I went on there and made a profile. I was charging $5 for editing, nothing. I was making like $40 a month. And then in 2015, when I quit or 2016, when I quit, had quit, um, I got on Fiverr just full time. So I had a just very practical thought in my head, which was, you know, if, if this is the only thing in my life that's making me money right now, it probably deserves a little more of my attention than I've been giving it. Mm -hmm. So mom knows best, in other words. Oh, my mom always knows best. <laughs> so what's mom saying about you now? <laughs> um, I actually run a business with mom. So mom and I are like business entrepreneur partners. Uh, we love it. Like whenever we're hanging out, we're more so I feel like business partners even than mother daughter. <laughs> we're like, we're in it. We're in it together. So I think I'm mom's very proud. Uh, and I owe this to mom because mom was a great role model for me. Outstanding. What a wonderful thing to say about mom. <laughs> and to be a business partner now. Yes. Yeah. Now, you, you said you started off making low wages, but then at a certain point, things shifted. Everybody doesn't have your story. So, so how did it shift? How did it change? You know, I think the big shifts that happened in my story were merely because I stuck with this so long. Um, the first three years were very uneventful. I kept my head down. I still made decent money. I was making... I think like 68k or something a year which is still amazing you know working for yourself with, with your laptop so i was content um i didn't say like oh i need to be a big six-figure earner i didn't really care i was 23 24 very happy and then in 2017 when fiverr launched fiverr pro which is like the top one percent of the platform that was kind of their program in a way to be competitive with an upwork or these other sites that are seen as like higher tier than fiverr and they wanted to have people be part of Fiverr Pro. So they reached out to me because I had been on there for years. And they said, you know, hey, we want to make you one of the Fiverr Pro copywriters. We're looking to populate the category. And I was like, okay, cool. And they said, you know what, you're going to go from charging $25 for things to $100 for things because we need you to. Um, because that's the psychology, you know, pricing and everything. Like you're the luxury brand of Fiverr. And um that's what changed my life. You know, it didn't get rolled out in full until 2018. So from 2015 to 2018, life was pretty uneventful on there. You know, I did increase my earnings year over year, but it wasn't until 2018 that they like exploded my earnings because of Fiverr Pro. And people will say to me like, well, you're lucky you got on Fiverr Pro. You can't get on it now. But not true. I have people every week tell me that they're being accepted into it. So I, I throw that out there. So it made a huge difference for you. And is that when you catapulted into the seven figure range? Uh, I actually didn't hit making a million dollars on Fiverr until September of 2020. But that is when I went into the six figure range in 2020, or, or excuse me, in 2018, because mm -hmm. I was making like 60, 70 K a year. So 2018 was a huge jump from 65 K the prior year to three to 273 K in 2018. So that's a huge, huge jump. And that was kind of when this all just got crazy. Um, that was when like CNBC covered me for the first time and it was so public, all this money like I was making, you know, that was hard, like right on the internet, what money I earn, you know, some people like to try and keep that private. Um, but it was just boom, it was out there. Uh, and that's kind of when this part of my story began. Yes. People try to keep that private, but you have been very public about it. Tell me why. Um, there, I guess there's two reasons. One, these news outlets ask for it. And in the beginning, I, under, you know, I worked in PR, so I get how PR works. And I know that if you give them what they want, they'll reward you, you know, with PR. And then eventually you don't have to share that information anymore. So I feel like I finally this year, I'm at a point where I don't have to from here on out share it. Uh, so I shared it in the beginning for the news angle, one reason. And the other reason was I wanted to be transparent about it because I really believe that this was something that a lot of other people could be doing. And I wanted to share it because I'm like, I'm not just gonna like hide this and it's just for me and nobody else. Um, that's not how I am. So I was like, you know what? Other people could be doing this. 
parents, you have single parents. I have people in my group, I have grandparents who are doing it. Um, I was like, this is a really amazing side hustle. And I feel like if I am more transparent about it, people will you know, trust me and, and maybe consider it for themselves. All right, parents, grandparents, <laughs> you heard it from Alex. If you're looking for a side hustle yes. or a main vocation that she has done, you have something you can explore that you haven't thought about before, which is why we wanted to talk to you. <laughs> and so I, you said something very interesting on that. You're, you're sharing this. You understand PR. How has all, all this sharing impacted your business? Because you were already successful. What has sharing done for you? Um, sharing has actually helped advance my personal brand, like me separate from Fiverr. Um, these articles, you know, grow my social media following. They, ha- you know, people will buy my eBooks, they'll buy my online courses, you know, they'll, they'll buy into the brand of Alex Fasulo from the PR. And that was my aim because I knew I didn't want to, for the rest of my life, just be the Fiverr girl because Fiverr still in, in part owns some of my business. You know, I, I run a business using their platform. So, you know, starting in 2018, I did recognize I wanted to start to create um, my own stuff, you know, that is not not associated with fiber for just protection and whatever, you know. So um, PR and, and being transparent with reporters and getting my name out there has made me, I feel like, more of an authority in the space than just a freelance writer. In other words, it sounds like you're saying your brand. Yes. Is Excellent. And yeah. you've, you said authority, credibility. Yes. Tell me more about that. I mean, I feel like nobody is ever really an expert. I always have a little problem when people are like, oh, I'm an expert at this. or I'm an expert at that. Or when these crypto people who are like, no, I'm a crypto guru. I'm like, no one's a crypto guru because it hasn't even been around for like 10 years. Um, So I don't think anyone's ever an expert. But I do think that since I am heading into my seventh year of doing this, that I am in a position now where I feel like I have a lot of insight and information that I want to share with people about things that I learned along the way that they don't necessarily need to make the same mistakes where the industry is going. Um, I've been around so long now that I'm in contact with a bunch of different people in the industry who are going to launch new things this year. So I'm, I'm trying to get into that, you know, place where I have, I get tipped off and what's to come and I can share that. And I'm, yeah, I'm making myself like a news aggregator in some way. Well, you are an expert. Own it. (laughs) Claim it. You've made seven figures doing what you do. There are some people who are experts who won't even make that. So, I mean, just a fascinating story. And by the way, I never ask a woman her age, but how old are you? (laughs) You're so funny. I'm 28. I don't don't mind when people ask me. Yeah, I think it's so uh, important to share that with our Mm -hmm. audience because you have accomplished this so early. And uh, so sometimes people may think, well, you have to be older and more experienced and, and all these other things. As a young person, I mean, you're a beacon of light for all of us, but I think especially for young people who, uh, it's been tough in the economy in some ways for folks coming out of school. And so you are showing uh, opportunities for us to look at and think about differently. Yeah, I mean, I, I love doing that. Like, I, I love to both be productive, you know, earn money, whatever, and then also help people at the same time. I think those things can all happen simultaneously. So I have recognized that I, I, I guess, especially because of the pandemic, that was when I realized that I have very helpful information to help people weather some seriously tough financial situations um, from people losing their jobs to being fired to people dying, you know, to all these different things that happened in the last year. I had people start to write to me and say, you know, I have nowhere left to turn. Can you explain Fiverr to me? And at first I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, you know, I'm answering as many people as I can. And then I realized I should start just publicly releasing content on this so these people don't have to direct message me like it's just out there. And then that, you know, just kind of blew up because people were like, oh, my God, this girl's sitting on like the the golden ticket here. Yes. (laughs) I was like, oh, you know, I'm so close to it. I didn't realize that. Um, But people don't realize just how great you are. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, because I'm talking to people all the time. And and as a coach, I experience this when working with people. And so that's why I find you so fascinating. And I wanted to share you with my audience. 
But what I like to do now is just take a small break and acknowledge some people who help me do what I do. And I have to start off by acknowledging the wonderful people at Grand Heron International. The key to sustainable leadership lies in the ability to thrive during uncertainty, ambiguity, and change. Grand Heron International brings you the coaching assistance program, giving your employees on-demand coaching to manage through a challenging situation and arrive at a solution. Visit grandheron.international.ca slash podcast to learn more. And that one you're able to see on the screen. But I also want to acknowledge uh, the wonderful folks over at American Express, stanforsmall.com, and the team at uh, IBM, Goldman Sachs, Infinity, and Progressive, PayPal, Kroger, Fidelity Investments, Walgreens. Those are all sponsors who uh, have uh, helped us out this month. And the C-Suite Radio and the C-Suite Network team, always want to acknowledge them as they help me turn the volume up on business. But we'll have more right after this. This episode is brought to you by PayPal. Ah, online. It's where PayPal was born. But it's not all dancing cats and double rainbows in cyberspace. I mean, one minute you're trying to outbid Soup Boy 99 on some antique spoons. Next thing, your bank account is nothing but tumbleweeds. But now, PayPal has ventured out into the real world with non-dancing cats and actual rainbows, ready to help you start taking payments in person. It's a safe and easy way to get paid. Just generate your unique QR code in the PayPal app for customers to scan and start accepting PayPal in person today. Learn more at paypal.com slash US slash get QR code. This episode is brought to you by Simply by Frito-Lay. You have enough on your plate, but now there's one less thing to overthink with Simply by Frito-Lay. It's your favorite Frito-Lay snacks with ingredients to feel good about, like Simply Blue Corn Tostitos, Sea Salted Ruffles, and White Cheddar Cheetos Puffs, all made with no artificial flavors or colors. So enjoy what you love and look for Simply brand snacks online or at a store near you. This podcast is sponsored by Eddie Turner, LLC. Organizations who need to accelerate the development of their leaders call Eddie Turner the Leadership Accelerator. Eddie works with leaders to accelerate performance and drive impact. Call Eddie Turner to help your leaders one-on-one as their coach or to inspire them as a group through the power of facilitation or a keynote address. Visit eddieturnerllc.com to learn more. This is Phil M. Jones, author of Exactly What to Say, Exactly How to Sell, and Exactly Where to Start. And you're listening to the Keep Leading Podcast with Eddie Turner. We're back. I'm having a ball talking to Alex. (laughs) We're talking about leading as a freelancer, how to make six figures as a freelancer, making opportunities for those who may not have considered uh, some of these opportunities before. We invite you to visit Keep Leading Podcast dot com to get the archives of all episodes and this episode is going to live on the internet of course uh linkedin facebook youtube after this episode is over but you can also see it again on keep leading live.com which is on the website and this will be released as a regular audio episode in the days to come as well so talking to alex fasulu We're talking about leading as a freelancer, how to make six figures as a freelancer. Alex, you've told us about the the incredible journey as a freelancer and uh, the success you've had in terms of finance, but also the impact you're having on on people and even able to start a business with mom. (laughs) Shaquille O'Neal famously said, it's not about how much we make, it's about how much we keep. And... He uh, sets an example of that, especially in an area where people don't necessarily keep all the money they've made. You've made seven figures. And I know that you're a person who hasn't spent it all. You have done some incredible things about savings that you've mentioned. Can you share with my audience your philosophy on saving? Yeah, um, I know people. I had a lot of different feedback from the CNBC episode where I talked about my approach to money because I think. My approach to money is not millennial at all. It's actually more old school. Um, I'm a like spend it, 
spend what you have and don't spend more than that type of person where I feel like a lot of millennials are like, no, put it all on, you know, eight credit cards and pay it off and you'll make this an interest and that an interest. And I'm an old soul if you can't tell. So I, I feel like it's no wonder I lean in the direction of, um, I'm, I'm very old school with my money. So I save it. I save it first and foremost. Um, you'll never catch me, you know, in debt or anything. I save my money and then I you know, spend it as I can spend it. So um, just bought it. I'm actually in my house. I just bought, which is amazing. And um, I am investing a lot of money back into my businesses right now. So I'm, I'm careful to keep a lot floating around still because I like to have it accessible so I can use it to grow my businesses because that's my first and foremost love and passion when people are like, oh, why don't you go spend it on a purse or why don't you go spend it on a designer jacket? And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with people who like to do that. But my bu business makes me happy. So I actually like spending money on my businesses. <laughs> They're like my children. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's how you'll catch me. I mean, I have, I have some money in retirement. I have a SEP and an IRA. I have uh, some money in the stock market, a little money in crypto. And then yeah, the rest is in house, car, and just saved. Beautiful. I mean, I'm so proud of you. And again, at 28 <laughs> years of age, you have the mentality, uh, you're far advanced, uh, both in what you've accomplished, but in your, your thinking. And that's just so exemplary, so admirable. And uh, I have a William Guth, who's, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, chiming in. He said, these online communities favor younger people. And he says, same, same with Surefire Investing. In some ways, that may be true. Yeah, it may be. But certainly, uh, we see it starting to scale up uh, in the direction of people who are learning to use this. You're, uh, you're, you're, you're saving and you're applying this. But when you said that, you said companies, plural. So you're more than just one company now. Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm all over the place when it comes to like, I am a serial entrepreneur in the truest definition of it to the point where I probably need to like calm down. Um, I, I mean, in any given day, I work on like six or seven different businesses or projects because I love it. You know, I love it. So um, I have Fiverr, right? I have my personal brand that I create content for. I have my podcast that I launch. I have my closed Facebook group, which is a totally different brand that I'm actually working on making into a news site. So I'm, I'm building a news website with my uh, website builder, launching my YouTube channel. I have an app that I made. I have a drop shipping business I run with my cousin. It's just like, I sound crazy, but I could, it, it keeps going. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Keep up the good work. What yeah. advice would you give to others who are listening to us right now? Oh, like any advice at all? About getting started. If they're interested, I'm sorry, it's been more clear. <laughs> if, I said, if they want to get started, they're thinking, hey, I've never thought this was something for me. I want to get started. What should they do? Uh, with freelancing, you're saying, like with free on Fiverr or something. Um, okay, so I would say to them that this is your chance to do something you actually want to do with your life and that you enjoy doing. So I picked writing because I always liked writing. I did not think it would make me good money. I always thought I would um, live a modest life as a writer and I was okay with that. Uh, so I would say to them, you know, spend a day or two to getting to know yourself and your interests. Like what do you actually want to do if money was not an object mm -hmm. and, you know, come up with your list. Then once you have that list, find the freelancing platforms that match up with that. So like, Fiverr has expanded and it has a lot as all digital marketing now as fitness lessons, cooking lessons, music lessons. Um, you know, it, it has more than you would think on it because it's they're working to expand. But if your particular skill that you want to offer isn't on there, there is a platform for it. Um, this year, more than ever, like so many of these platforms are popping up that, you know, I would say to people, don't panic if it's not on Fiverr. Um, you know, there's Upwork, there's Contra coming up right now. There's Continuum. LinkedIn is launching its own uh, freelancing platform. In yes. Yeah. yeah. So there's so much opportunity. So I would say, you know, get to know yourself, what you want to do. And then based on that, you know, Google it, find out which platforms work best for you. And then the next thing I would say is to be patient because this definitely is not a get rich quick scheme uh, at all. Um, I, I'm, it, it's going to take a lot of patience. <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm glad you mentioned that because that was why I was asking you earlier about your start and the, the transition. So very nice point that you made. As we see these sites uh, growing in use, 
Would you say that freelancing is the future of business? A hundred percent. I, I don't see why not, because I look at it very unemotionally right? and I go, okay, you know, free, here's the freelancer. Here's the company. Is there any, it's just a win-win when you think about it for both parties, the company will no longer have to pay for commercial spaces. Um, you're an independent contractor, so they don't have to pay for your health care. They don't have to pay for your benefits. So they're going to save money by using you, not to mention freelancers can specialize in something. So if you hire an employee to work, you know, in photography, you're kind of expecting them to learn a bunch of different stuff in it. Whereas with the freelancer, you could look up specifically, you know, a photo editor who has worked with Instagram, or you can look up, you know, exactly the expert that you need, work with them on that project. And, and you can come back to freelancers multiple times. Like if you find one that you love specifically for one thing in your business, you can use them over and over again. It's not just like one project and, and you know, goodbye. And on the freelancer side of things, you know, you get to work from home or anywhere in the world. You can do whatever, you know, and you can you can put in as much or as little as you want. If you only want to work four hours a day, you can. You know, you're probably not going to hit the six or seven figure mark, but you could still have a pretty good, you know, income just working four hours a day and anywhere you want. So it's it's because of those two things. I don't see how it won't be the future for every for all every industry. Yes, and I think it's going to serve that way for several reasons. Uh, a few people are wanted to give you your, their feedback. Laura Renaud, she's based in Arizona, and she says she loves this content. Thank you for sharing, Alex. Thank you, Laura. Maria is chiming in again. She says, I love that Alex followed her interests, and I do see that fiber can be very helpful to jumpstart a business. You are right, Maria. It, it is. And she says... Freelancing provides a lot of flexibility. Glad to hear Alex's success. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Thank you, Laura, for chiming in. Thank you to everyone who's chimed in in our conversation so far. If you haven't had a chance to give us your feedback and say hello, let us know where you're joining from. We invite you to do so as we head to the tail end. If you have a question for Alex, this is an opportunity to ask an expert. And so we invite you to do so. Uh, Alex, you've also done some really wonderful things. You were talking about your mom earlier. I saw that you did something special for her. Oh, with the house? Yes. Yeah, that was, um, she, you know, people were saying to me like, oh, did you buy it for her? And I'm like, I did, but she always was, you know, she was always going to give me the money back when she sold her house in Albany. But I just wanted to give her the option to move to Florida sooner than that. You know, we didn't know if it was going to take like two years to sell the Albany house, you know, who knew? So I was like, you know what? It's just money. Like, who cares? And I, you know, I want to go to Florida. I don't want to be in New York State anymore. No hate to New York State. I, you know, born and raised. I just like didn't want to pay the taxes. Didn't want to do, deal with the weather anymore. So I was like, you know, why not? Um, we, we're always fluid with our money, especially the business she and I run together. Uh, I, I think more families should be embrace that, you know, instead of the, it's me, it's mine, it's no one else's. Um, you know, your family is family. And I know there's, you know, of course, some crazy family members, but the good <laughs> ones, you know, you can really use them in your business because there's no one like family. No one like family. You're a remarkable young woman. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for being such a beacon of light. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with you. And it, it certainly puts a new uh, emphasis, I, and, and for, at least for me, on leadership. That being an entrepreneur, being a freelancer, an independent contractor, you are leading. You've shown us how you've led through self-discipline of, of running your business, of, of trying to you know, at, at Fiverr to get things done. You've shown it to be an entrepreneur. And then not only being an entrepreneur, I think you've uh, referred to the fact you have other people that work for you now. You don't do it all yourself. Correct. Yes. So on so many levels, you are a leader. You are leading and you are a, what I call one of our younger emerging leaders. But you've already emerged. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> and Maria says, finally, Alex is definitely a beacon <laughs> of light. I agree. So. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Alex, I wish you continued success. Thank you for being a guest on Keep Leading Live, showing us how to lead as a financer, lead as a freelancer. <laughs> you got it. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. And thank you for tuning in. That concludes this episode, everyone. I'm Eddie Turner, the Leadership Accelerator, reminding you, as I do every week, that leadership is not about our title or our position. Leadership is an activity. Leadership is action. It's not a garment that we put on and take off. We must be a leader at our core and allow it to emanate in all we do. So whatever you're doing, always keep leading. Thank you for listening to your host, Eddie Turner, on the Keep Leading Podcast. Please remember to subscribe to the Keep Leading Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen. For more information about Eddie Turner's work, please visit eddieturnerllc.com. Thank you for listening to C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.